the industry right now, I've been doing this since 2014, 2015, and um, this has to be the worst that I've ever seen it. Um, I've been looking for a job casually for a while now, and A, the postings, there are a lot fewer than there were before, and B, salaries have pretty much stagnated, and C, remote work seems to completely have evaporated since the end of the pandemic. The industry is in a really bad place right now, and to pile on and to be honest and to tell people something that I don't think people are really talking about is that not everyone's going to make it. It's as simple as that. Um, I am a self-taught engineer, as you may know. I actually studied economics. I studied economics in university and I did my bachelor's from 2006 to 2009. I graduated in 2009, a year after the crash of 2008. Um, in the beginning stages of, you know, one of the biggest recessions that the global economy has seen. And I graduated in economics in 2009. And now I'm a software engineer. So I guess you can see where the story led, right? And I think that the software engineering and computer science industry is in a similar place where the industry is in a serious downturn. Um, there are various reasons for that, but I think one of the biggest reasons is the fact that during the pandemic, uh, 2021, 2022, there was a huge, you know, hiring push. Big companies hired a ton of engineers, hired a ton of people, way more than they needed because, you know, if we looked at 2020, everybody was at home. So the only companies that were making tons of money were tech companies. So businesses do as businesses do. And we got into a situation where people were getting, you know, crazy salaries and it was easy to get a job. Fast forward a couple of years, you know, the growth that, 2020 would have led people to believe that the tech industry would have didn't happen obviously and now a lot of those engineers that got hired are getting laid off additionally i think another thing that people don't really talk too much about is elon musk <laughs> and regardless of how you feel about him and how you feel about twitter or x he bought that company he went in there and one of the very first things he said was why do we have so much staff and I'm not going to say I agree with him or disagree with him, but he did fire a lot of the staff. And yes, you can say that X is a worse product today than it was back then, but how much worse? And if you compare it to the number of staff that he cut, you'd think that it'd be a lot worse than it actually is. And so I said that to say that as much as the media gives the guy flag, if you look at what he did with Twitter, a lot of the other companies followed suit. So Another example would be the blue ticks. He made them, you have to pay for the blue ticks now, right? Whereas before it was free, he got a lot of flack for that. And, you know, maybe you agree with it, maybe you don't, but Facebook also did the same thing. And I think if you look at software engineering and if you look at, you know, all you have to do is go on YouTube and type in day in the life of a software engineer and watch any video from pre 2020, and you'll see a lot of these big companies have tons and tons of engineers that don't actually do very much and aren't very integral to the success and survival of that business. And so I think, you know, if you take the example of Elon Musk and Twitter and you take, you know, the hiring push that happened in 2020, and then you take, you know, the global downturn, I guess, or cost of living crisis, you want to call it. If you put all of those things together, what happens is you have an industry in a place where no one's hiring. And to bring it back to, you know, my experience graduating in 2009 is that the people that are graduating right now with computer science degrees, if you're going to, if you want to find a job, you're going to have to wait, you know, yes, it's getting better now in 2024, but if you graduated last year, if you graduated this year, you're going to have to wait to find a job or it's going to take you longer than it would if you had graduated just two years earlier. For a lot of people, that's okay. They can wait, they can afford to wait, but for some people, they can't. And the fact of the matter is that when companies do start to hire again, they're not gonna hire the people that have been waiting two years to find a job. They're gonna hire the brand new grads that graduated a few months ago. And so what happens is you get this kind of forgotten classes, which is what happened to me with economics. The people that graduated last year and graduated you know, this year, the ones that didn't find a job, and that the ones that couldn't wait, even some of the ones that could, that's it. 
yes, if you keep persevering, you can probably get into the industry. But the question is, do you really want to? And I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make, that you have to ask yourself a difficult question if you are looking for a job and if you just graduated. How long am I willing to wait to do this career? How long am I willing to wait to start this career and pursue this? And does it mean that much to me? If you answer, you know, if you're willing to wait and you really want to be a software engineer, then yes, you probably will make it, but the cost will be very high. And to be completely honest, I don't think everyone is going to make it and I don't think everyone is willing to pay that cost. So I think people really need to be honest with themselves and to ask themselves that hard question of how much does this mean to me? And, you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's, I think it's fine to study one thing and go do something else, you know, or broaden your horizons or whatever it may be. But I, I really do think that the industry is in a place right now where it's oversaturated with engineers. There are a lot of engineers that aren't actually that good. The experienced engineers, there's lots of them, but there's, again, some are very good, some aren't that good, you know, and I think that we are headed to a place where it's like our industry is going to have a reckoning where we're going to have to improve our processes. We're going to have to improve, you know, the quality of our engineers. I mean, if you look at the crowd strike fiasco that happened just last week, that's something that should never happen. If we're doing our jobs properly, that should never happen. We should have processes in place to stop that kind of thing from happening. And yet it did, you know, and CrowdStrike was responsible, but, you know, Microsoft is also responsible. They shouldn't have software that allows that kind of crash on that kind of scale. But, you know, it happened. And so I think that, you know, sometimes life is hard and sometimes you don't get what you want. And that is the truth. You know, people might try and sugarcoat it and tell you, yeah, it's going to be fine, it's going to be okay. But the reality of the situation is there's probably more software engineers than we need. And until the industry changes, until, you know, businesses have free cash to spend, it's going to be very hard to get a job. And if you've had to wait two years since your graduation and then your first job is going to be in 2026, when there's new grads in 2026, you have to ask yourself, why would a company hire me? You're going to have to do things in the next, you know, if it's one year or six months or whatever it might be, you're going to have to do things in that time to make yourself the most attractive candidate. And it's not fair because, you know, if you just graduated two years early, two years earlier, you wouldn't have to do any of that, but that is life. Life is not fair. Um, so yeah, um, I guess that's my very pessimistic take on it. Um, sorry if I've offended you and I'm sorry if I've told you things that you don't want to hear, but I just wanted to give my take on that, but I wish you guys the best and I hope that it does work out for you, whatever you decide to do. And if you're in the industry, um, just let me know what you think. Um, if you agree with me, if you disagree, just, you know, add your comments, but yeah, that's all for today.